Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we'll be discussing the case of an elderly male who presented to our ER with, with who was rather brought to our ER with complaints of decreased response and generalized tiredness before oh. the event. So, um, so we have a 78-year-old male patient who was brought to us with complaints of decreased response since that morning, but a little. Uh, look into his previous history. He's been complaining of generalized tiredness, easy fatigability since quite a couple of weeks, which was not addressed because his complaints were very vague. But that morning when he was found to have depressed sensorium is when they brought him to our ER for further management. So in our initial 10 second assessment, patient was responsive uh, uh, to verbal command and was drowsy but arousable on repeated stimulation, but he wouldn't stay up for a long time. And along with this, he's had, um, uh, uh, so moving on to our primary survey, uh, he, would, he would attempt to obey our commands. It was not very brisk response. Then moving on to our primary survey, airway wise patient's airway was patent. There was no anatomical deformity, no excessive pooling of saliva or secretions that were noted. And then uh, uh, breathing wise, he had a respiratory rate of 17 cycles per minute, maintaining saturation of only 95 to 96 percent on room air. But air entry bilaterally was equal and even on quick auscultation, we couldn't hear any added sounds. Moving on to the circulation part, he had a respirate, uh, re heart rate of 60 beats per minute, maintaining blood pressure of 140 over 70 with all his peripheral pulses being palpable. The patient who is having altered sensor with bradycardic, bradycardic. what are your differential diagnosis? So, we will have to rule out elderly male and IC bleed has to be ruled oh. out. And second, again, an uh, elderly male could have had a could be on beta blockers. Mm. So, either a beta blocker overdose or beta blocker in conjunction with any other okay. possibility for depressant okay. sodium. Third, again a CVA, you will have to think of, if not for trauma, a CVA. Okay. Then um, an undiagnosed or diagnosed hypothyroidism has to be thought about okay. like myxedema coma. Okay. Then uh, any neurological uh, weakness, CNS infections, meningitis okay. or post seizures. Okay. Uh, all these has to be thought of when the patient comes with brady or any toxicology overdose it's that causes uh, bradycardia or um, your op 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 poisoning op and carbamates mm. can all these have to be thought okay. of and then disability wise he had a gcs of uh, e3 v4 m5 to 6 mm. And then pupils were uh, 2.5 mm bilaterally and symmetrically reactive to light, no anisocoria noted in this patient. Now exposure wise he had a temperature of 98.4 degree Fahrenheit, maintaining blood sugars of 191 milligram per deciliter. So with this primary survey we took an ECG and a ABG as our primary adjuncts. ECG just showed sinus bradycardia with a heart rate of 58. Oh. No blocks, no acute STAT changes were noted. It was a simple sinus Voltage. brady. Voltage is normal. No. So it was a simple sinus bradycardia, no STAT changes, no additional U waves, nothing of that sort was seen. Then coming over to the ABG aspect, we took it to see for any uh, apart from acid based arrangement, any respiratory order, uh, disorders. And this patient was found to have a pH of 7.45 with a PCO2 of 38.3, PO2 of 66.1 with a bicarbonate of 26.8. So, no acid based arrangement as such, but uh, PCO2 was slightly low and hypo hypoxia was there, like PO2 was 66, not exactly hypoxia, but lower li line of PO2, oh, okay. 66.6. Lactate, on the other hand, was only 1.8, which is okay. normal. So, using this as a primary adjunct, so far we have got a patient who's had a low or a decreased sensorium with this GCS only totaling up to 3, 4, 7, yeah, 7 plus 6, 13, 13, to 4, 13 on 15 so GCS. So, can this hypoxemia can produce a... Uh, it can produce. So, at this point in time, we also put a nasal prongs to maintain it, but uh, that also was our DD. Uh, as can a differential hypo decision. hypoxemia at this uh, level, 66, can produce altered behavior? Coma? Yes, sir. Elderly patient. Hmm. So, they will have decreased oxygen reserve. So, hmm. that in that case, little hypoxia or a PCO2 buildup can alter patient's mental status. And are you seeing uh, patients with this CO2 level with uh, coma? Uh, no. 
is not very not, common not very common <laughs> but coma can produce hypoxemia there are different comas like uh, mm-hmm. hypothyroid coma produce hypoxemia to develop hypoxemia induced coma the hypoxemia has to be very severe and they'll be more agitated than the in comatose mm-hmm. hypoxemia produce more agitation mm-hmm. than coma So so far we've got a patient here who's an elderly male who was brought to us with a GCS of 13 to 15 mm. with no pre- uh, previous history of trauma and has a bradycardia set in but with a normal blood sugar levels. So with this information from the primary survey we went on to the secondary survey moving on to the sample history he was a known case of diabetes mellitus uh, chronic uh, coronary artery disease dyslipidemia hyperuricemia bronchial asthma and a benign prostatic hypertrophy bph and he was on clop dual antiplatelets with nebivalol atorvastatin and a combination of uh, furosemide and spironolactone diuretic and on oha metformin no sulfonylureas only metformin and uh, febuxostat with a, a forocort spa- uh, inhaler that used to use it with spacer okay these are his medications okay. so um then uh, m- events that led to this patient uh, he was found to have decreased response in the morning uh, with a preceding history of generalized tiredness and weakness that he had since about a week but no history of any fever uh, trauma neurological deficits and he was last seen normal by night mm. uh, but no facial asymmetry no drooling of saliva no his past history of seizures also no urinary or fecal incontinence uh then um uh, so all these were the negative histories and a little uh, deeper into the history we found out that the patient also has had a progressive gain in the weight in the last 3 months mm-hmm. but his appetite as such hasn't really gone up but a uh, patient has a disproportionate weight increase okay. so with this what metabolic conditions produce weight gain one uh, hypothyroidism mm-hmm. causes cushing's causes Mm, then a steroid overdose mm. that is yakushin yeah, basically okay. then um growth hormone mm. excess that but mm. their weight loss will be different from what weight loss you are seeing in this their bone growth is uh, like uh, overtaking okay. the body weight mm-hmm. okay and in cushing you love cent- central obesity okay with wasting of the limbs okay um, fellow hum Uh, buffalo hum okay so um we then um basically we did a ct brain to rule out any um acute infarct or a bleed mm-hmm. and uh, that cns that part was ruled out patients uh, point of care um can you rule out uh, acute infarct in ct no no it's not possible bleed. Mm-hmm. so we did do even an mri also so mm-hmm. ct we just did it on the end but okay. after a while when the patient sensorium did not like come up to like 15 within 4 to 6 hours we did a, even a mri stroke protocol okay. but that also did not show anything suspicious of a acute cva okay. and then we did a point of care uh, cbc crp and did not show any uh, signs of infection either hmm. so hypoglycemia and neurological causes right there was ruled out hmm. so we were just symptomatically managing the patients until bl- no, no, can we blood. rule out hypoglycemia patient suppose patient had is not a diabetic but hmm. normal scenario would be patient had hypoglycemia in the night and prolonged hypoglycemia patient does a hypoxemic hypoglycemic encephalopathy hmm. what happened to the blood sugar when the patient come to hospital it will rebound hmm. that is because of in cortisol only yeah, stress, uh, stress, stress, response. Stress, hor- stress response and all mm. hormonal release that will become uh, normal mm. but to know that we have to wait some mm. more time mm. okay many times uh, hypoglycemic episode will be unrecognized in the mm. night time and when you see the patient patient mm. will, will be having normal blood sugar okay he was uh, his blood sugar levels were uh, promptly uh, monitored every fourth hourly sir and none of the times he has had a documented hypoglycemia okay. so when uh, he is not a diabetic no? he is a diabetic, a diabetic on metformin okay, okay. so normally metformin will not the, produce hypoglycemia mm-hmm. what is the action of metformin action it's guanosate inhibitor it reduces insulin resistance ah yeah. uh, it improves the insulin and it's certain mm-hmm. utilization of the uptake in the cells that mm-hmm. is the action so normally in normal course they don't produce hypoglycemia mm-hmm. 
so when his blood uh, parameter blood reports came in all his lab parameters were pretty much within normal limit except for the thyroid profile mm. so tsh was found to be 67.45 with a t4 of 0.39 mm-hmm. and since he's never had or that was rather never diagnosed to have hypothyroidism this was the first time when you know we we uh, found out that the patient has hypothyroidism and considering the patient's presenting complaints myxedema coma has to be thought of mm-hmm. because patients with an undetected or on hypothyroidism treatment presenting to the hospital with complaints of altered sensorium or hypothyroid uh, hypothermia and decreased response then myxedema coma has to be thought of now the management if at all it is myxedema coma is entirely different than an uh, undetected or newly detected hypothyroidism so we'll first talk, discuss about how do we treat a undetected uh, or newly detected hypothyroidism mm-hmm. so in this case before we start the idea for both the things is so, thyroid for knowing that how do we clinically so this case has got only limited features of hypothyroidism mm-hmm. but what are the typical features of mixed edema coma uh, so uh, that pre tibial shin edema uh, will be edema. there patient will have bilateral limb uh, that this patient had bilateral limb edema okay. progressively what uh, type of limb edema they have Uh, non pitting okay, so this patient had that edema okay. and then uh, apart from this there will be cold intolerance mm-hmm. uh, hypothermia, hypothermia hypothermia will be there Th- then temperature here is only 98.4 mm-hmm. yeah. mild reduction that's mm-hmm. all okay. then apart from uh, yeah, question the possible bradycardia Bradic- constipation hypothermia bradycardia ec shows low voltage complex is mm-hmm. that tension hypoglycemia okay So in only few are there some uh, non pitting edema is there mm. bradycardia is there the obesity is there altered sensorium is there mm. and then lab wise patient will have hypoglycemia mm. hyponatremia mm. Uh, so why they have hyponatremia dilution this is dilution mm. hyponatremia then uh, so these were the present uh, while we were discussing the the uh, the treatment for both is thyroxin okay. but for myxedema coma will go with an intravenous okay. thyroxin because it's a medical emergency so in that case what we do is we uh, start with a 200 to 400 microgram injection thyroxin mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then the idea is the patient has to uh, the, the symptoms have to revert or the t4 has to come up to a 1 to 2 um what's the unit mm-hmm. a nanogram per deciliter ka range mm-hmm. so till then we keep giving thyroxin mm-hmm. and then loading dose would be 200 to 400 after that 50 to 100 microgram per day we keep giving patients thyroxin so when we are giving iv thyroxin now mm-hmm. it is not available we give tablet thyroxin mm-hmm. put a rail tube and start the tablet thyroxin uh, tablet when you are giving that what all things you have to observe what complication patient can have so thyroxin basically has a direct impact on the cardiovascular status so patient mm-hmm. can go into tachycardia mm-hmm. and if at all it is excess then patient there is a possibility of patient throwing in arrhythmia also mm-hmm. so patient especially in elderly male with a background of coronary artery disease heart rate has to be promptly monitored mm-hmm. through through the day mm-hmm. um then um apart from that um patient can develop cardiac failure cardiac that is the most cardiac dangerous failure. problem of uh, thyroid treatment mm-hmm. if you over treat the patient mm-hmm. uh, so then uh, but lot of places uh, iv thyroxine is not available mm-hmm. preparation so in that case we can start on thyroid tablet mm-hmm. now um, talking about thyroid t- tablet especially when we are newly detecting hypothyroidism it depends on two factors one is the age of the patient if it's an elderly male more than 60 years or not male just elderly person more than 60 years and the second factor we look into is whether the patient has a coronary artery disease mm-hmm. because like we men- discussed it the thyroxin has a direct effect on the heart so if at all any of this is present then we start the thyroxin tablet in the uh, concentration of 1.2 microgram per kg per day and then we uh, monitor the tsh up for about um, after about 6 weeks or a month and then depending on the patient's response to thyroxin if it is less then we increase 25 to 50 microgram per okay. day every day if it is normal we continue the same dosage if it is less also we reduce 25 to 50 microgram per day 
so oh. to avoid iatrogenic hypothyroidism hyper hyperthyroidism so this should be if at all the patient is elderly now if it is a young adult then we start itself with 1.6 microgram per kg per day mm. and then we monitor and then do okay. taper accordingly okay. so this was an elderly patient with a cad history so we had to be extremely cautious in starting the patient on thyroxin mm -hmm. we started the patient on 50 microgram mm. and then daily monitored it up until we brought it to 100, 100. microgram per day now he, he we will ask him to review us after about a month mm. recheck only is tsh now there is no role of t4 okay. t4 is only to diagnose so basically okay. hypothyroidism can have different classifications one it can be primary hypothyroidism or secondary hypothyroidism primary hypothyroidism is when thyroid gland itself has a disorder mm. so all the uh, in uh, uh, obvious symptoms that we discuss about cold intolerance obesity hypothermia constipation all of this is predominantly in primary hypothyroidism okay. now secondary hypothyroidism is a central cause wherein there is a uh, disorder in the pituitary hypo hypothalamic pituitary axis so in that case all these overt symptoms will not be there but serum cortisol can be checked because mm -hmm. in serum cortisol levels can be decreased in secondary hypothyroidism uh main uh, thing is other hormonal imbalance will be associated, associated with hypothyroidism. hypothyroidism but some symptoms of uh, primary hypothyroidism can be there also mm. so in this patient once we found out that the patient has hypothyroidism that to an overt primary hypothyroidism mm. we had to check the serum cortisol levels to rule out secondary hypothyroidism mm. but turned out that patient has only primary hypothyroidism so thyroid glands had to be now checked for mm. any goiter mm. and then we have to ask the patient for any iodine deficiency mm. all of that Go part of the there history. are two important types of uh, hypothyroidism one is goitrogenic non goitrogenic mm -hmm. non goitrogenic is a common thing what we see okay mm -hmm. what, what is that atrophic thyroiditis mm -hmm. atrophic not primary induced atrophic atrophic, atrophic thyroiditis the other one is goitrogenic goitrogen goiter is basically an iodine deficiency okay. causes goiter okay. and uh, for that is it seen majorly in patient, people who are living in di iodine deficient geographical areas like the ones near the mountains mm -hmm. so non iatrogenic is autoimmune like we discussed okay. so a uh, thyroid gland has to be also checked because this is the first time is ever getting evaluated for hypothyroidism then serum cortisol levels have to be checked ruled out the possibility for a central uh, secondary mm -hmm. hypothyroidism mm -hmm. and then in hypothyroidism itself we'll have an overt primary or it can be a subclinical hypothyroidism or a central hypothyroidism so how do we differentiate between these three is in primary overt hypothyroidism tsh will be extremely elevated mm -hmm. or elevated with a correspondingly low t4 uh, t4 t3 t4 so this is primarily over hypothyroidism subclinical is wherein the tsh will be elevated but t4 is found to be normal and patient mostly will not have those obvious symptoms of mm. hypothyroidism the third thing is the central hypothyroidism wherein t3 t4 will be uh, either found low. to be like yeah low but tsh is not that very elevated it will yes, be this is low because tsh, TSH is TSH not produced right? whereas oh. other one thyroid hormone is not working oh. so yeah, the, will the stimulation will be there <coughs> negative feedback will be there that produces tsh, TSH elevation TSH. Mm. so tsh elevation is the common thing what we see in our practice oh. yeah. so this would be the way we differentiate between hypothyroidism what is subclinical hypothyroidism wherein tsh will be low but uh, Uh, sorry tsh will be high yeah. Yeah. but t3 t4 will not be as low as we'll be expecting it to be normal okay well, what do you do for that type of patients we don't want we don't want to treat these patients may come to there are two important problems in icu when you are practicing one is uh, this subclinical hypothyroidism and other one is u uh, thyroid u gly u thyroid state sick u thyroidism mm -hmm. sick u thyroidism means what Uh, TSH is normal, but T4 is less. T4 or TSH can be slightly mm. mo modified, mm. maybe high, low, like that. Mm. But there is no clinical feature of hyper or hypothyroidism. That is euthyroid. Mm. That you have to clinically judge the patient. You have mm. to see what is a problem in patient, whether he is having tachycardia, bradycardia, or not. But mm. hy this subclinical hypothyroidism, when will you decide to treat? Uh, if it is associated with some infection or something, we will give a time for like four to six weeks and repeat the. Uh, infection it. normally will not produce hypothyroidism they mm. all produce hyperthyroidism if patient has symptoms mm. symptomatic if the patient is having minimal symptoms mm. then we have to start patient is pregnant lady then we have to start mm. high cholesterol induced problem we have to start tpo positive we have to start what is tpo 
ஒன்றுமிஸ்ட்ரால் <laughs> 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 So 276 what happened to the uric acid uric acid was fine so uric acid was no uric acid was high uh, yeah, it is high it was high so uric acid is high due to cholesterol high cholesterol, cholesterol. high cholesterol is due to hypothyroidism so mm-hmm. once you treat uh, hypothyroidism cholesterol will come down uric acid will come down there is no need of additional treatment for that okay mm-hmm. So, a TPO we sent and it was found to be 291, which is okay. elevated considering the upper limit cut off to be 34. Okay, what is your, uh, like, uh, what is the implication of t- TPO in your management, emergency management? Mm-hmm. Or most all patients will have high TPO. Like, yeah. What is the importance of that? Mm-hmm. There are some rare mm-hmm. condition where TS, uh, hypothyroidism can occur due to some uh, rare infection or drug or uh, something like that. their patient may recover back to normal if tpo is positive he'll never be recover back to normal so you have to take the tablet life long mm-hmm. so if you are doing tpo then there is only one th- thing that the patient has continue. to take life long then sodium levels were found to be 132.1 okay, slightly okay. lower but again can be attributed to his bilateral pill edema dilution dilution and then uh, so basically the idea is to make sure that the symptoms patient improves symptomatically bp is normal bp was fine so b- fine meaning it was uh, 100 over 60 like uh, borderline some days it is 110 over 70 la, but he's What never got cardiovascular gone. problems of hypothyroidism heart failure it can cause which type of heart failure diastolic heart yeah, failure it's mainly diastolic heart failure not as historical preserved rejection uh, fraction rejection uh, fraction will be normal but patient will develop heart failure when you give fluids mm. okay so you have to be very careful in hypothyroid uh, failure to give fluids mm-hmm. okay then uh, we did a 2d echo on this patient what lung problem patient can develop a patient can have hypoventilation with respiratory acidosis one okay. because of respiratory muscle weakness second they have like an osc kind of picture the obesity basically restrictive obstruction lung disease. restrictive lung Because disease there will be thick skin around the chest wall so they mm-hmm. will never allow the chest wall to, to expand. Expand. expand so there is a restrictive lung disease mostly mm-hmm. then central hypoventilation due to hypothermia okay. uh, reduced uh, metabolic activities that is also possible so respiratory acidosis can okay. build up so that would be the heart, pulmonary and cardio uh, mm-hmm. issues that the patient can develop neurological problem uh, encephalopathy okay that's okay then other than that entrapment neuropathy like carpal tunnel syndrome tarsal tunnel syndrome peripheral okay. neuropathy okay. all these things can occur mm-hmm. Okay, then. Because of that. And then constipation history because a okay. uh, uh, patient will have What changes occur in CSF? When you are, suppose you are doing a lumbar puncture in this patient, what change you should anticipate if it is only hypothyroidism? Mm. Yes. Proteins, Proteins are elevated. Uh, This is one condition which produces albumina cytological dissociation. That means albumin or protein will be elevated. Mm. Cells are normal. Patient is having altered behavior. If you mm. do LP in a patient who is having hypothyroid coma only protein will be elevated mm-hmm. okay mm. so this patient was assessed for peripheral symptoms of mm. carpal tunnel tarsal tunnel and mm. all despite especially because the patient had bilateral edema but uh, but patient had no deficits no primary complaints regarding okay. neurological issues Okay. Then, uh, apart from this, we did a 2D echo on this patient and mm. we found that the patient had dilated LA mm. with a good uh, LV, but a good LV meaning moderate LV with um, RWMA, but that can be attributed to his previous ACS okay. history uh, following which he was diagnosed to have coronary artery disease. Okay. Then, apart from that, no features of any pericardial effusion was noted mm-hmm. and uh, he had grade 2 diastole dysfunction. Mm. um but no uh, pah features so okay. this was his echo report and then uh, after we initiated the patient on thyroxin and we uh, hiked up the dosage with each passing day and with constant monitoring of his cardiovascular uh, status patient condition improved symptomatically 
and uh, one and then his sensorium improved his generalized weakness tiredness all of that ameliorated he became so better so after 1 month he'll come back for review review mm-hmm. we'll be doing psh psh what should be the target psh normal uh, basically less than 5 1 to 5 0 to 4.2 is our value mm-hmm. so what should be the psh level up to 5 should be less than half of the normal 3.5 range. 2.0 that means 0 to 4.2 is our range mm. okay it will be less than 2 3 2 half of the normal range less than half of the normal range okay. that means tsa should be always less than 2 mm. okay it is going near to 0 what should you do what should be do but done near to 0 do decrease reduce the dose mm. if it is uh, more than 2 increase, increase the, dose. the dose okay how do you increase the dose again 25 to 50 micro gram per day when elderly individual we have to increase very small doses 12.5 or 25 mm. don't increase uh, very high, high doses mm. that's all mm. um then uh, he was not found to have any infections and since he clinically mm. improved mm. we uh, what are the reasons tutored. for mixed hematoma one mm. an undiagnosed hypothyroidism like this case mm. or if the patient already has hypothyroidism but he's uh, not a, a drug defaulter mm. he's not taking or if he's um or it's a suboptimal dose mm. more requirement and less prescribed dosage or uh, a patient has hypothyroidism but has a super added infections uh, most common is infection myocardial infarction stroke that's why mm. whenever stroke patients come with hypothyroidism we should we should never stop that drug mm. we have to continue or give an additional dose so since he improved uh, we educate or rather counsel the patient about his thyroid uh, issues and that ask for a prompt follow up uh, one thing is actually if the patient is coming in like mixed edema coma uh, we can give a stress response uh, stress dose of hydrocortisone like it's generally can be given as an initial bolus dose <coughs> if he is hematically unstable so like any patient if the patient is like in acute state with uh, like hypoventilation hypotension high bradycardia and all that uh, we will assess with abc we support with either with oxygen supplementation then uh, like uh, we intervene if the patient is again going into a respiratory failure and then in the circulatory part but the if your patient is in a persistent hypotensive state one is we can give a stress dose of a uh, 100 to 200 mg of hydrocortisone but even if you are starting vasopressors concomitantly we have to start thyroxine also because otherwise the patient will not pick up his uh, blood pressure and hemodynamics so when the patient if confirming it is a mixed edema coma in ed itself we have to start the first dose of this if possible then only the patient's hemodynamics will improve and also again the patient's hypothermia everything should be corrected in ed itself so we can provide warm blankets uh, saline uh, warm saline everything but again we have to be careful because we cannot we should not push the patient to fluid overload mm-hmm. so we have to restrict fluids and uh, use fluid judiciously along with that we have to correct any hypoglycemia if there is by like giving any iv infusions and also because the patient will be in a drowsy state and also same time we have to control the temperature and all other parameters to the physiologically normal baseline <coughs> so going with abc and then along with that as we already discussed we can start with iv thyroxine uh, to correct the uh, underlying factor also the patient's triggering factor should also be looked into like any infection acute cva mi or maybe any gi hemorrhage or any acute hypoxia acute hypocarbia if anything which may have like triggered this mixed edema coma this should, it should also be parallelly treated to the presenting illness so this patient actually was long, more like in a partial stage so he improved uh, like rather quickly than like expecting like in a proper mixed edema coma but uh, after starting the medication he drastically improved the clinical symptoms improved so the goal of treatment will be like to like uh, one, one is to relieve the symptoms of the patient second is to somewhat uh, bring the tsh to almost normal limit uh, third is to avoid over treating the patient mm-hmm. so because especially in an older patient we prefer to avoid over treat so and also if the patient is presenting with a goiter in the initial stage our follow up will be also be based on the reduction in the size of goiter so reduction in size of goiter reduction in tsh and uh, improvement of clinical symptoms and also avoiding like over this treatment with a plan of uh, thyroid treatment as such so this patient clinically improved and we discharge the patient uh, waiting for follow up what is delayed uh, reflexes basically in uh, uh, um, hypothyroidism patient uh, the when when we check for deep tendon reflexes uh because of the fatigued muscles there will be a uh, delay in the response time of the reflexes when we delay check relaxation, relaxation time not response mm-hmm. time is normal mm-hmm. relaxation relaxation is delayed that's mm-hmm. all okay. okay thank, thank you, you sir